I'm also an idiot because I'm wearing long sleeves and pants in the Philippines while working out. So I'm really <laughs> sweating like a pig. It's not the smartest person today. Nope, not me. What, what, what are you gonna do with this? Good morning, folks. So today is gonna be a quick one. Just quickly heading to the gym. We're talking about fitness food because you guys had a lot of questions about that, so it's gonna be quite simple and quite fast. And okay, we're back with... No, no, no. The Archangel of Death. Oh, bro, Archangel, that's me. Archangel. What can I eat? Right now, um, basically water and air. It's all you need, man. <laughs> Woo! It's all you need. See you, brother. <laughs> hey, man. Bye -bye. All right. First of all, I'd like to formally apologize for posting very late this time. Um, I'm currently traveling in Japan, and I will be doing. Um, a bigger video about that and it's been absolutely amazing, but so tiring and we've basically been shooting from 7 a.m. All the way to 10 p.m. Last time we finished at midnight and then in between that we're doing uh, road sessions where we're driving for about four or five hours, so I thought I could actually edit during those four or five hours, but trust me editing in, <laughs> editing in a car is no fun. Okay, aside from all that the recipes I'm going to show you today, which I shot previously in Manila already are basically ketogenic uh, recipe. So ketogenic is this new fad, or not fad necessarily, this new trend diet that people are trying out that basically just uh, ha resides in the fact that people think that you can, your body can learn how to use fat efficiently. So it prioritizes a high fat, high protein diet rather, rather than having a high carbohydrate or moderate carbohydrate diet. So what does that mean? That means it focuses on protein, on very low carb vegetables, um, no sugar, uh, no processed grains at all. Um, in fact, things like dairy and cheese are completely okay. There are varying different, there are different levels of keto. So you can be extremely zero carb keto, you can be low carb keto or moderate carb keto. So it really depends on which one you're following. Okay, so is this the best diet ever? I don't know. Like for me personally, a uh, moderate fat, high protein, moderate carbohydrate diet works for me the best. So something like keto could actually work for me, but I haven't really tried it full on yet to be able to tell you. What I tell people all the time, there are three things when you're looking at a diet. But before all that, what is a diet? A diet doesn't necessarily mean a complete deprivation of food. A lot of people think nowadays that dieting means not eating lots of things and being really sad and boring and everything. So a diet simply means your daily consumption of food. That's what a diet is, daily meals. So basically if you eat marshmallows every day, you are on a marshmallow diet, simple as that. But if you want to diet for weight loss, then that's something that's completely different. And that's what I'm talking about today, dieting for weight loss. So when you diet for weight loss, there are three things you need to look out for. Number one, not all diets affect people in the same way. Obviously we're all different in terms of our composition, how we process ingredients and everything. So a diet that works for me for weight loss won't necessarily work for you for weight loss. So what I always tell people is to experiment, try it out, give it at least two or three weeks really strict, like really stick to it, no cheating, uh, no erring this side or that side, really just following the guidelines strictly as possible and you'll figure out whether or not something works for you. So after three weeks, you'll be able to see the results or not and then decide if you wanna move on or try something else. The second thing I always tell people to look out for is portioning. In general, we've come to a point in our lives where we're eating too much, just with everything, social media, internet, TV, food. We overconsume things. It's a very consumerist um, generation that we're in right now because everything's accessible, everything's become a commodity. Whereas if you look at maybe 50, 60 years back, I wasn't alive. <laughs> Just want to make that clear. I wasn't alive yet, but if you look back through those generations, if I talk to my father about when he was a kid and when he was growing up eating, they never had an abundance of food. 
They didn't have mountains of snacks to choose from. They didn't go to the supermarket and have aisles just filled with colorful little packagings and every flavor imaginable to God and little shops and franchises and restaurants. We're at a time where food is so accessible and that's why we're having problems with the environment. That's why we're having problems with obesity. That's why we're having problems with diabetes. It's because there's just so much food and people are consuming it too much. You will be amazed by how resilient your body actually is. If you're someone who wants to lose weight, the first thing I always tell people is look at your daily portioning of meals and cut that in half. Most your stomach will actually get smaller. So if you start eating less and less and less, yes, it might be painful, not painful, not, not really painful. It might be, you might feel like you're depriving yourself for the first couple of days, but then after a while, you'll see your, your stomach will actually get smaller and you'll get full faster and you won't look for that much food. So portioning is so important. The ones who eat a lot, usually they're people who work out a ton as well. You always have to look at, you know, level of activity. If you're someone that has really high activity, like when I go to see the farmers in the Philippines and the provinces, these guys are eating six cups of rice a day. Go for it, no problem. They're ripped, they have six packs. You know why? It's because they're eating those six packs a day. But when you see what they eat it with, it's actually not much. It's really just the rice, maybe a little bit of ulam, a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of meat, but just really not that much. And they're out in the fields all day, walking, working under the hard sun. So they're spending so many calories. So look at your level of activity. If you're not someone who spends that much calories outside, then maybe you shouldn't be intaking that much. And the third most important thing has to do with processed ingredients. If you're someone who wants to lose weight really seriously, then starting from now, ground zero, you will only eat things that are natural. What does that mean? Everything seems natural, right? Sugar is pretty much natural. Yes, but it's highly processed. It's something that has to go through many processes for it to be able to go from raw form to your mouth form, that makes no sense. But basically, before you can eat it, you actually have to process it quite a bit. Same with white rice, it has to be polished, it has to be dehusked, and so many things have to happen to it before you can actually eat it, you have to cook it. Cooking it is a process. So what I tell people as much as possible when talking about processed food is, you wanna eat things that you can grab from a tree, grab from the soil, obviously you're in a supermarket, you're buying it from there, but Go with me, you know what I mean, right? So it's as fresh as possible. All you have to do is chop it. If you can eat it raw, great. If you have to cook it a little bit, fine as well. And things like meat, fruits, all those things apply there because basically all you have to do is you take a raw form of an ingredient, a cow needs to be killed, butchered, and then put it in your plate. But there's not much processes involved. Look at cereal. Something like cereal is basically like wheat all over in a big field, then that has to be cut down, then that has to be processed, milled, dried, et cetera, et cetera, added flavors, added sugars, added stabilizers. That becomes a highly processed food. So when I say eat natural, I only say that because it's simple. You want something you can just grab, cut, eat. You don't want something that you have to think about what's inside and et cetera. So to simplify your life, those three things, just follow those guidelines and it will take you a really long way. So number one, make sure that the diet you're doing is good for you for weight loss. Number two, make sure, num what was number two? Number two, okay, now I remember, God, that took a while. Number two, always make sure your portions are appropriate to your level of expenditure and in the same time, defined by your goals. So if you really wanna lose weight quickly, then your portions will get smaller, simple as that. And then finally, number three, is eat natural. All those three things together, you should be on your right track. So, I'm gonna show you a couple of ketogenic breakfast recipes, just because I know a lot of people have been asking for them. And usually when you ask, when you like this video, when you subscribe to the channel, and you comment below, I read the comments, I reply to most of them in the first couple of hours. So make sure to hit that bell as well to get the notification so that we can have a chat and conversation on it. And whatever you guys usually comment in terms of what recipes you wanna see, I read them, and then I make them happen. So, keep Let's start with some ketogenic pancakes. Okay, making these pancakes might seem a little different simply because they're much denser. You know, you have protein, you have some flax, you have some chia seeds, all things that are very thick. You're not adding things like baking powder and stuff that will usually fluff up the texture in the dough that you're putting. Though, 
you know, this is a blank canvas. You can add exactly what you want inside. It really depends up to you. I'm giving you the base recipe to which you can add on anything you want to after. So it'll come up a little dense, but if you want to add things like almond flour, more coconut flour, or eventually some baking soda or baking powder, try to fluff it up, play around with those ratios, see something you like. I, I for one, like things that are quite simple, and then I just top it up with stuff. If you want to eat them alone, go for it. If you want to eat them with honey, that's up to you as well. It's all good. The only reason I'm making a porridge without using oats, I personally love oats. Oats are not necessarily bad for you. You can find some oats that are gluten-free that are fantastic as well. Usually what you want to look out for in um, instant oat packages or oat packages is added sugar in the ingredients, but you can really kind of see that right away quickly on the labels. So just take your time reading the labels in the supermarket. But why I'm not putting oats in this particular recipe, but you can actually add oats, is just simply, I just want to give you a base ingredient that you can actually make these porridge that you can actually make this porridge using two ingredients, the chia seeds and the flax seed, and that should be enough to bind the whole dish. Now, if you wanna add things to it, that's completely up to you. This is something, this recipe is particularly made for people who are purely ketogenic and are trying to go with zero to no carbs at all, except for the bananas that I'm adding to it, obviously. But if you're someone that's okay with low carb, or if you're working out and you wanna add carbs to your diet, go ahead, add in a, I'm gonna have this problem like so many times. Go ahead, add in one third cup of oats. I can't believe this is happening again. One third cups of oats, and I'm sorry for wasting your energy. Okay, I'll leave you alone, bye. This has become one of my to-go dishes simply because it's so fast to make. The one important thing I just wanna remind you guys to do and make sure to do is just really run that blender for a long, long time. Usually what happens is you'll see it stop moving for a while, and when it stops moving, then you know that the green has become really kind of nice and small. And why we wanna get it to that point, so it's much faster to quick. So basically, all the ingredients and the fragrance that you're putting beforehand will be cooked out already. So you don't wanna add your cauliflower and then overcook everything. So basically, I'm making sure that this is really small. You add it when everything's done. Your cauliflower takes two minutes. It comes together absolutely perfectly, and that's what you want.
one of my favorite recipes. So delicious and so light, yet so much savory flavor to it. And finally, who doesn't love some beautiful poached eggs? You know, a lot of people break their poached eggs or tell me that it's the hardest thing to do. It's actually one of the easiest things to do. Obviously, if you want to get perfect, like the ones you see in hotels and stuff, that's a little tougher, simply because in the Philippines, our eggs seem to run a bit more liquid than in other countries. So what happens is the egg white is quite liquid, so that dissipates and kind of goes all over the place in the water and doesn't give it that perfectly kind of like dome shape you see in hotels. But if you can get past the aesthetics of it, the flavor of the dish is still really perfect. My key ingredient, especially here in the Philippines, is to make sure you're adding enough vinegar to the water so your egg whites really coagulate and bind themselves and really cover that egg yolk the way you want it to be. I'm so tired. I literally just finished editing this video. I'm so sorry that it's so long again, but at least you're getting about four recipes for the buck of one video. So even though it's long, it's four recipes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm still in Japan. I'm really tired. I'm about to go to sleep. This is the first day where we got some time off uh, to kind of chill. And so instead of having dinner, I decided to to edit a video for you guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, if you do, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Obviously get all of the updates there. Comment below, like the video, send me messages, do whatever you want, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.